everybody and welcome to today's uh, webinar presentation. Uh, today we'll be discussing uh, Fronios Solar Web and uh, how you can achieve best services with it. And uh, to present this webinar today, um, we we'll have our usual uh, presenters, uh, Mohamed Sidat, the Technical Sales Advisor for Southern Africa, who is with uh, Fronia South Africa, which is a subsidiary of uh, Fronia International. And then myself, Sipra Nokolo, Technical Sales Advisor for Western Africa. And of course, my colleague, David Wangi from Kenya, who is a Technical Sales Advisor for Eastern Africa. So together we will be presenting this uh, webinar and uh, hope you're all going to enjoy it because it uh, contains uh, all the information you need about uh, solar web and how to maximize its services. So quickly we shall discuss the agenda for today. So we'll go through the accounts, uh, possible accounts, uh, the free and the premium, have an overview of the system, go through the solar web premium uh, features, discuss what's new in solar web, uh, discuss also its services, um, delve into how you can query your solar web using the API, and of course, uh, product registration and warranty processes, go through some example of systems, and then uh, for more information about it, we shall provide more on that, and then uh, have a brief session of our Q&A, that's questions and answers. So without further ado, we shall, uh, Go ahead and uh, continue. Like I earlier said, uh, we'll be discussing accounts. Yes, so there are two possible accounts that are uh, available in uh, Fronios Solar Web. So they are the free and the premium. So for the free um, account, it's usually the basic uh, version and uh, it's usually free and uh, will always be free of charge. And then we have uh, the premium uh, Fronia Solar Web Premium that uh, comes uh, with a uh, subscription, periodical subscription. And then, of course, with this comes uh, additional features. And of course, these features are quite uh, exciting. So, we will be going through uh, the features of both the free and the premium to give you a better understanding of what it's all about. So, to start with, we'll just give you a brief system overview. So, this is how. Uh, the landing page is for the Fronios Solar Web. Um, of course, if you have an account already, uh, you can just log in. If you don't, you can always uh, do so to open an account. And then uh, this is how it, it a system, a basic system looks like. And uh, let me pick up my pointer here. Okay, so um, you get to have a, a whole view of the system, a holistic view of the system, where you have details of. Uh, power generated from the PV system, power consumed, the state of charge of the battery, and then of course uh, the grid, if you are feeding in or taking from the grid. Uh, my colleague David Mwagi will delve more on this uh, in subsequent slides. So, um, as you would have noticed in the previous slide, uh, we have um, the bubble chat, which is a very interesting feature in uh, Pronia Solar Web. With this, you can uh, have an in-depth view of uh, what's going on in the system. Like I said, um, the power generated from the PV uh, system, uh, the power consumed at your consumption point or load point, uh, the state of charge of your battery, and then uh, the state of your grid. That is, if you're feeding in or taking uh, power from the grid. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, of course, details can, of this can, of course, be obtained by just clicking on any of the bubble chat. So let's say, for example, if we click on uh, the, the battery icon, it uh, gives us uh, the state of charge of the battery and uh, with which power the battery is being charged. So in this case, for this particular screenshot, uh, the battery is being charged with 2.28 kilowatt and the state of charge is 65%. So same information respectively can be obtained for other bubble chat with the respective features that they represent. So uh, for energy monitoring, it is possible for the free version to have a display of a daily characteristic curve for production and consumption for uh, three days, that's for the last three days. And then, um, yeah, 
So you can also have the display for daily, monthly, and yearly production and consumption uh, data. And uh, of course, we can have these totals across the system's run duration. Uh, added to that, um, you can also have a, a graphical display of all this information. And of course, you have um, uh, tax bars that you can use to click on the respective information that you need. So with this, you get to know, um, for example, on the right hand side here on this graph, you can get to know the level of uh, your PV production, how much you produced, and then the yellow section here represents uh, how much power you used to charge the battery, that's power into the battery. And then uh, with the gray area, it represents uh, the power consumed directly or energy consumed directly. So it gives you a detailed information about your system in entirety. Yeah, so system management is actually made simple uh, by the use of uh, uh, widgets. So if you have more than one system or maybe several systems, and uh, you want to have an overview of each and every one of them, you can uh, simply have them in widget uh, view or uh, in a list view, as you can see from the right hand uh, screenshots. So you can have them in widgets where you can use a um, preferred uh, picture to use them as a profile pictures for the respective sites, or you can have them in list format. And um, with this, you're able to have an overview of all the systems in your, in your, in your account. And then this makes it easy for you to have um, sort of a good control over the information that uh, you can get. And then uh, of, of course, uh, control that you can have over them. Uh, so you can, it's possible to also have a CSV export of self-consumption data. So just in case you need to present a sort of a report, you can of course extract this report uh, in CSV format. And then, of course, these reports are automatically uh, generated reports. Uh, error messaging is also possible. So this can be automatically generated, uh, most especially if you want to com compare uh, two systems or two inverters, for example. Uh, maybe one is on the producing, and then you would want to find out what is happening. You can compare uh, inverters with each other to, to see if there's any anomaly in any of the respective uh, inverters. Uh, MPPT visualization and software update is also possible. So with the MPPT visualization, you're able to visualize uh, the production uh, uh, from the respective MPPT, uh, MPPTs. As you can see here, now we have two MPPTs here respectively. And then uh, this other green line is uh, the sum of both MPPTs. So you can have individual and uh, combined views of your MPPT uh, level. Yes, in addition to that, remote uh, inverter update is also possible. So all you need to do is to go to settings, uh, go to components. We shall see all this uh, subsequently in the uh, coming slides. And then uh, if you have any updates, if any update is available, just for example, in this case, uh, I think in 2018, there was a new update for four digital input output ports. So you don't need to go to the site. All you need to do is to log on to SolarWeb, and then uh, you can now successfully up have this update done on your inverters remotely. Yeah, so that's uh, for the free version now for the SolarWeb uh, premium features. Yeah, so the premium features actually come with uh, much uh, more additional uh, features. Uh, the display of characteristic curve for production and consumption uh, across the system's run duration is possible in this case. Uh, mind you, uh, if you could remember uh, in the previous slide, for the free version, it's only available for three days, as in the last three days. But for the premium version, it is available for the system's entire run duration. And then, of course, you have customized reporting um, by freely configurable channels and time periods. So with this, uh, you can have um, various channels or parameters that you want to monitor or get data from. Uh, if you want to monitor just uh, the reactive power or the real power or the apparent power, be it current or voltage of the respective phases, this can be uh, freely configured and then you can have data coming to you based on these parameters that have been pre-selected. 
Yeah, so you can also have a permanent overview of our power consumption and especially from the grid for cost control and, and of course for energy balance. So this gives you a good uh, view of uh, the, the grid, uh, how much your 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 imputing and how much you're taking so this gives you the basis to uh, an uh, informed uh um you become an informed person on uh, how to control uh your, your grid costs yes so um, of course the, uh, another interesting feature is uh, the visualization of return on investment so with the premium version of the solar web you are able to visualize uh your return on investment it gives you a detailed uh information about um, uh, how much the cost, how much uh, uh, your cost so far, and then how much has been your yield so far, and then gives you an estimate of uh, the likely date of uh, amortization, which is a very, very uh, uh, important uh, piece of information that you would need for uh, your system. And of course, uh, there's a, you can uh, implement uh, new features uh, on, the premium version, uh, like uh, the energy meteorology uh, feature. And then, um, of course, we have uh, also on Solar Web Premium, the Amazon Alexa. So uh, uh, for those that don't know, um, Alexa is uh, basically a voice controlled uh, software that you can use to have access to uh, your smart devices. So if you have a smart device that you use for monitoring, you can uh, activate this or enable it, as you can see. Once it's enabled on your monitoring device, you can uh, use your voice prompt to uh, get information. So for example, you can say, Alexa, launch SolarWeb, and then SolarWeb will, will be launched on your monitoring device. And then you can now derive uh, or get whatever information you need from it, like uh, asking Alexa, uh, for the height of your self-sufficiency level for today. You can also ask it for the uh, state of charge of your battery. And of course, uh, this comes with also, you can also add uh, or ask other information from it, and of course you can get it. So um, yeah, so this is a, a very interesting feature, uh, which is available for premium users. Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, uh, what's new, which is, um, the energy meteorology. So uh, this aspect will be uh, discussed or presented um, by my colleague, David Mwangi, whom I will be handing over to briefly. So um, David? Yes, Mo, thank you so much for a very nice presentation. So I'll be taking over from here and discussing the new aspects, what is new, for the uh, Fronia Solar Web. But before we do this, um, I'd like to launch two polls um, just to get to understand how you are doing monitoring for your systems. So the first question would be. Do you normally use the manufacturer's monitoring portal or do you have that party uh, portals that you use? I'd like to give us your feedback so that we have a better understanding of uh, the monitoring portals that you are regularly using. So we leave this question on for the next uh, 30 seconds or so uh, to allow everybody to submit in their, their votes. So in about 15 seconds or so, we'll be closing this poll and sharing with you the outcome. Okay. So we close it now and let's share the outcome. And it appears quite a number of you are accustomed to using the manufacturing portal, which is good because uh, as you're going to see in more details going on with this webinar, there are a lot of benefits that you can get, for instance, from the Fronius monitoring portal, the solar web, and about 13% of the attendees today have other third party monitoring platforms, which is also quite okay because it depends on how uh, you want to do your monitoring. And my colleague Mohammed, much later on, 
we'll be looking at how you can actually get data from SolarWeb, even if you're not a very regular user of SolarWeb. Um, let's launch another poll. Uh, and this one is, if you're using Fronia SolarWeb, how do you normally use it? Uh, there are a few options you can choose from. So kindly also provide us with your feedback. Very important, very appreciated. So it could be for private usage. Uh, it could be for monitoring in general to receive error messages for customer consultancy and those kind of things, as well as you could say that you have no experience at all with SolarWeb, which is still quite okay. And the reason for this webinar today so we leave this on also for the next 25 minutes, seconds or so, and then close it and share the results and uh, continue with our webinar. So, okay, just about 10 seconds. And thank you so much for all of you who have provided us with your feedback on the two questions. Okay, so, from the results, we can see that uh, the biggest proportion have really no experience with uh, SolarWeb, which is at 47%. And really, this is the essence of this webinar to really uh, encourage the use of the monitoring portal. And then we see another portion that is relatively big from the outcome of 26% who are using the, mo the monitoring portal for general monitoring. And uh, yeah. A smaller portion of the attendees for private usage. So um, let's now continue with the webinar and we will be going through the new features that are included in uh, Fronia's solar web. So, and of course, like my colleague uh, Cyprian has mentioned, uh, energy meteorology is something that has been added uh, in the recent past in Fronia solar web. And you're going to look at why this is an important aspect of monitoring to have. So um, in the new portal, we have the energy, energy widget included. And basically this uh, widget can show you uh, different kinds of data. Um, you can see what is the current uh, weather situation at the moment at the installation area. You can as well as do uh, production forecasts and also do simulations for on pilot usability and yield forecast as well. So what I would like to do at this point is to quickly go through uh, the demo site of the Fronius uh, SolarWeb. So even if you do not have an account with the Fronius for monitoring, like the 47% uh, of the attendees have responded, when you go to your web browser and you type uh, solarweb.com, then you're taken to the demo site of Fronia, where you can see quite a number of uh, demo systems to be able to familiarize your, yourself with how the monitoring portal looks like. So when you get here, you just click on, you can of course change the language here to suit uh, the language that you're used to. And then you click on the demo area and there are a list of systems that are shown in this dashboard. So you can see in total, we have about 12 demo systems that you can choose from. And of course, we have other aspects that are also compared. But for today's session, let's look at one particular installation to go deeper into how the system looks like in SolarWeb. So um, the dashboard itself is going to show you the current power condition, as you can see here on the left side and for this installation for instance at the moment uh, there is a generation of just about 430 uh, watts uh, of production and this is about six percent of utilization of the pv installation so uh, the reasons for this could be a very low insulation or irradiation level at the installation site at the moment you can as well see data of uh, how much power is being taken from the system itself. So it seems like right now the system is feeding 583 watts into the own pilot, and therefore the supply is supporting 90% of the energy required at this site. But you can see a big jump now at the moment, whereby maybe some other loads have come on, 
and the PV installation at this point is only meeting about 20% of the load requirement. Um, if you have a battery integrated, you can see whether the battery is fully charged in this case. So you can see the battery is about 95% uh, charged, and at this point is being discharged with about 230 watts. Um, you can also see the energy flow to and from the grid uh, from this installation. But also importantly, like I've mentioned before, the weather widget here at the bottom right corner is showing you the ambient temperature at this point, which is 19 degrees Celsius. We can as well look at what is the wind speed. And at this point, we have 3.7 meters per second. What you can also get is a weekly forecast of how the weather is going to look like for the next one week. And we'll look at why this is important uh, data to have as we go forward. Um, let's get back to our actual presentation. So the kind of data that you will see from the weather, weather widget is, uh, first of all, uh, if you have a premium account uh, going forward, you will see um, when the sun uh, arose and then the sunset, the wind speed as well as what is the precipitation level as well as uh, irradiation in watt per meter squared. The standard or the classic account, the free version of SolarWeb, is going to give you just an overview of what is the ambient temperature, the wind speed, but the arrangement itself is not as intuitive as the uh, premium version of uh, Solar SolarWeb account. Um, at this point, uh, we look at also why this uh, weather widget is a key thing to add. Of course, uh, it says here that you have data for the exact location, uh, but this is important to emphasize here that you will see data as accurate as how close your installation is to the nearest uh, weather station. So if you require very accurate data for monitoring, then we would encourage you to invest in the very cost-effective solution for doing a weather station, which is the Fronius uh, solar box, uh, sensor, sensor box. And this is a webinar series that we actually covered in last, uh, during the session last week. So if you want exact data location for monitoring purposes, then you can invest in uh, the sensor box uh, from Fronius. Um, so energy meteorology has one key aspect, and this allows us to do a forecast on PV production. So on this graph here, we can basically see the time from start of production, which is about seven in the morning. And at around 10 a.m., we can see the actual power parameters or power data. So the power to the grid represented by these color codes over here. So uh, power to grid, power to the own pilot, consume directly, then consumption by other things, then temperature, as well as the PV forecast in this uh, shaded area. So the energy meteorology basically would allow you to do better planning because you can see hour to hour what is going to happen. And you can also predict uh, the PV production for the next uh, 48 hours, as we can see with this next graph. So the debt, when this screenshot was taken for the first graph to the left here was on the 28th of uh, February. And then the next one was taken on the first. So the following day, uh, the first of March. So, and you can see that during the peak uh, of the production here, we expect uh, about 1.3 kilowatts of PV power. And basically, forecast would help you to understand how your system is working so that if you're planning for maintenance you can see uh, which element of power will be available and therefore which loads for instance you can leave on or if you need to be running some other back, backup sources of, of energy to cover what your loads will require when you're doing your maintenance to correspond also with the pv production that you expect in that particular site um, so one of the key benefits, of course, of using a solar web or a monitoring platform connected to your so solar system or solar installation is to be able to give your customers the best possible service. And this is one of the key highlights of uh, Fronia's uh, solar web. And we are going to look at how this is done. So 
you can do this in uh, four key ways as far as uh, the Fronius uh, service is concerned. We are very particular on offering training and this is training for technicians that we do on a regular basis. We cover, of course, uh, various topics and uh, we are continuing, for, inst for, inst for example, we're doing webinars over the next uh, couple of weeks, which we are covering different uh, topics on alternatively. In addition, we put a very strong focus on uh, the Fronius System Partner Network or the Fatna program. And this uh, training for the Fronius Service Part System Partner, which was service partner before, but now has been changed to system partner, is important or mandatory for an installer or a company to become a Fronius System Partner. We also do have a dedicated tech support team and this uh, is assisting in the troubleshooting of uh, all faults or problems encountered during the installation of your system. Uh, this team is, uh, of course, uh, knowledgeable in all aspects of Ronia's products. It's spread in different parts of uh, the world, but you have a technical, a central technical unit in, the, in Austria that supports uh, all parts of the world, depending on the complexity of the issues encountered. Uh, importantly, also through Fronia SolarWeb, for instance, as, as I have men mentioned before, you can offer very good service to your customers and also through another uh, online software, which is the Solar Online Support, SOS, you are able to provide also additional uh, support by troubleshooting errors that may be encountered in the systems. So, uh, of course, when you are using the SOS, uh, the primary requirements is that you must create an account just like in SolarWeb. And when you want to troubleshoot a fault, depending on which inverter you are using, you have to enter the inverter serial number so to be able to see what are the recommendations for any fault conditions that are encountered. Um, so how is this uh, monitoring achieved? Of course, every device, every soft uh, Fronius uh, inverter has integrated uh, the data manager card 2.0. And this is uh, the central unit or the key unit that you need to be able to set data into SolarWeb. Um, of course, you do require an internet connection uh, to communicate between SolarWeb and uh, the data manager card. Um, when you want to see your consumption data, which is a critical element of monitoring, uh, you of course need a Fronia's smart meter. Uh, this smart meter, of course, uh, for those who are not aware, also allows you to do uh, uh, grid export limitations. So there are some countries whereby you are not allowed at all to export PV power into the grid. And therefore, you need a Fronius smart meter to be able to set what is the extent of the limitation uh, depending on your country's regulations. Um, the monitoring itself, of course, will be done through our freely available uh, software. And this is uh, Fronia's SolarWeb. And this uh, software is, of course, available for all smart devices from your laptops to watches and even tablets and, and phones. So depending on which device you are using, you can download the applicable app from either App Store, Google Play, or BlackBerry World. Yeah. Um, going further, um, of course, for SolarWeb uh, online monitoring through the normal pro, uh, portal, then you're going to need uh, a, a laptop or maybe a desktop computer. And this, uh, as already covered, is going to be your dashboard for monitoring all the systems that you have. It doesn't matter if you have one system or two systems. One, once you create an account, then this becomes your dashboard where you can see all your systems together. Um, for the Fronius uh, Solar Online Support, this tool requires, of course, that you create an account, as I had mentioned before. And in this tool, you can look at the cases that you have ha settled or uh, posted with technical support in the past. Uh, you can query device data to see things like uh, warranty conditions and stuff like that, as well as do troubleshooting depending on the state codes that uh, you have received, let's say, from SolarWeb. So once you have an SOS account, uh, you can come over to, to troubleshooting and putting the state code that you have encountered and you're able to resolve through very many and uh, well laid out uh, recommendations in Fronia's SOS. 
Um, through Fronius SOS, also you are able to do or to request for device exchange or repair, uh, depending on the warranty uh, period that you have been offered for that particular device. Um, so let us look now at what are the key benefits of using uh, Fronius uh, SolarWeb. And there are three key benefits that you can immediately get by using Fronius SolarWeb for monitoring. Uh, number one is, of course, monitoring. And this can allow you to check what is your system's output, what are the earnings. And then you can keep an eye on the overall power consumption and get uh, performance uh, reports via email. You can take it further and look at uh, the analysis. Uh, so if you if you want to find out if one of your systems that you have installed has any errors, then you can check quickly from uh, SolarWeb. And before you even get uh, a call from your, from your customer telling you that a system has a problem here or there, you are able to identify these problems and offer sort of preventive maintenance or preventive correction measures for that system. So you, at the end of the day, are going to ensure that the uptime of the system is as high as possible based on the frequent analysis from SolarWeb. Um, yeah, so then you also get uh, proactive service. So if an error occurs like immediately at this point, then you get a notification via email directly from uh, SolarWeb. Um, so when you're using a monitoring platform like SolarWeb, the goal is not just to look at how the system is working. The goal as a business person or as business is to look at are there more opportunities for doing business with uh, your customers or the end users? So in the quest of giving your end users or your customers better value for their systems, then you as a business or an installer can have opportunities or can realize opportunities where you can do even more business with your customers. So the idea here is to check, then act, then plan and uh, implement those uh, decisions. So one of the key things, for instance, for countries that are not allowed to export PV power into the grid is to look at how much excess energy is available from your system. So, and depending on this excess energy availability, then you can decide if that kind of installation qualifies for retrofitting or let's say a PV, a non-pilot for heating uh, water, or you could also retrofit a storage system to store excess energy for utilization when the sun has set or during night hours. Uh, of course, um, another key aspect that we are going to look at in a few minutes is the registration of your products and uh, the activation of warranty through SolarWeb. And this is also important to ensure that you are getting the best value of your, of your products so that a few years or depending on whichever duration, if you have a problem with your particular component of your inverter, then that uh, part is uh, properly covered with the applicable warranty terms. So, um, but in a nutshell, what kind of services can you offer to your customers? Uh, during the installation and commissioning process, then of course you're able to do the configuration of the data manager and the registration of the same so that you're able to get uh, data from the data manager into SolarWeb. And of course, you can define uh, different account roles in SolarWeb. So you could be the owner of the accounts, but you there are some other people that you want to bring into that particular installation for them to be able to monitor. So you can also you can assign either supervisor or guest roles in, uh, in SolarWeb. So as I mentioned before, you can also activate your warranties uh, registration as we are going to see in a, in a slide or two later, and also extend the warranty accordingly, depending on the kind of system that you're doing. And all this is actually done right in SolarWeb. So once the system is installed, uh, it does not stop there. Like I've said before, uh, the question is to look at how much more value can you get out of that particular system. If you're a business owner or an installer, you're looking at how much more value can you give to your customer and in looking at how much value then you can give to your customer uh, based on the very good analysis that you're getting from SolarWeb, then you also come into a position where you can do even more business, realize more income from your customers. 
So let's now look at uh, a very important aspect of SolarWeb, and this is the product uh, registration and warranty. So once you've done uh, your installation, depending on the number of components that you're using for your system, then you have to register the components that you're using. Uh, so if you have two inverters or three inverters in one system, you need to go to SolarWeb. On the right top corner, you will see this uh, tab where it says register product and you will fill the relevant data. Uh, and then once you have done filling the data, uh, installation country uh, and as, as well as the installer, then you just click on register. For more detailed uh, overview on how to do the product registration, kindly look at our YouTube uh, video on this link. And we will be sharing uh, this uh, presentation also uh, via email. So this link will also be included there. Um, so now an overview of the warranty options that you get from Fronius. And like I've said, when you get the product, shipped to you it comes with two years standard warranty so this is something you get even without activating your warranty on SolarWeb. but if you want to extend the warranty terms and conditions and the periods covered then you have to activate this uh, in the front year solar web so you have possibility to extend it for up to five years or seven years but it doesn't stop there if you are doing projects that require even longer warranty periods you can extend additionally to a period of up to 15 years. So in total, you have five plus 15, which is about 20 years of warranty. And once you have gotten or installed your system, it's important to note that the warranty extension in SolarWeb can be done within the first two years of registration of the product. So when you register your product, if you are not able to activate the warranty plan that you need or model that you need, this has to be done within the first two years after the product registration so like i said before it is, it is important to ensure that you are fully covered with the warranty applicable uh, conditions or periods depending on the market or the product uh, in question so i think uh, that brings me to the end of my presentation and at this point i'll be heading over to my colleague uh, uh, mohammed sidat to continue with the presentation from from this point on. Um, just a moment. Hey, thank you, David. The very informative yeah. um, session. Okay. Okay, so now I'll be taking over on the um, section of the solar.web query API. Um, this is a feature, feature that is um, available um, in Germany and in all our direct markets. And if you do uh, want access um, to this feature that I will be talking about, you can just email one of the technical sales advisors or you can even get into contact with um, tech support. What is an API? Basically what an API is, it's a application programming interface and it basically allows sharing between sharing data between two applications. Um, so in our case scenario, it will be um, the sharing of data between our solar web um, server, which is located in Austria, um, with the client's application over the internet. Okay. So in this case, the server will be the solar web. Okay. And SolarWeb obviously um, obtains data from um, solar PV inverters as well as other Fronius devices and collects this data and then displays it in an online format to the end user. The client can then go about querying SolarWeb uh, with an API in order to obtain the data from SolarWeb and to transfer it to some other third party platform. Um, this obviously has a lot of use cases. Um, for example, if you are an electrical utility, um, you could be having, um, you could be providing um, homeowners with uh, PV systems, and you could have maybe thousands um, of these PV systems spread throughout the country. Then it obviously becomes very important in order to um, obtain the data from SolarWeb and then display it on your own utility um, software. That maybe the end homeowner will um, now view um, all the information collected on SolarWeb 
by the utility software, as an example. Okay, it's also very um, popular to actually be used among, amongst um, O&M companies, basically those are operating and monitoring companies. Um, these companies um, usually employ a lot of different um, manufacturers inverters, okay? And when they do that, it becomes kind of very difficult for them to, you know, keep monitoring different manufacturers monitoring platforms. Um, so usually what they do is that they would approach a company like Fronius um, and then ask them, ask Fronius in order to get data from our SolarWeb. Um, this is possible via the um, API query and they can now obtain our data from SolarWeb and transfer it to their own third party data where they might have other manufacturers um, inverter data as well. So as I said, this is very useful, especially for very big um, installation companies. And um, as I said, we do believe this business um, model will actually grow quite quickly. So what are the benefits of the API? Um, one of the first benefits would be easy data integration in existing or new applications. And this enables the offer of new services for end customers. And it also offers um, integration in other monitoring or visual tools. Another advantage of, the, of our API is that it can be used by practically any programming language. So this again makes it extremely easy to use. And because it is connected to SolarWeb, um, this will also ensure that you receive the same quality of good support that um, is available from Fronius. So again, if you have any qu um, questions or issues with the API, you can always still contact our tech support team and they will still be able to assist you in transferring your data to a third party platform. What are the key features of the API? Um, the first one again would be filtering. Um, so your most API calls support filters. And the advantage of the filters is that you can now reduce the amount of data that you are using on site. So let's say if you don't want to obtain all the um, inverters data, um, if you only want to obtain certain um, data such as um, voltage levels and current levels um, at the um, inverter, you can do that. So you don't have to get all the data. And this again will reduce the amount of data that you do use on site. And you can do paging uh, for a large amount of data. So the caller does not get too much data at once. And again, calls um, become much faster in order to obtain this data. You can also get your HTML error codes and your JSON error detail extension as well. And the API provides additional information um, for the error analysis in order to see what went wrong when querying some data. We will now move on to the usage of the API. What are the authentication methods? So again, you have your regular access and your client owns a PV system and the client's email address um, is added to this PV system and hence this will ensure that the um, user's permission is required. All systems, all systems connected to the account by ownership or grant permission can be accessed. So it's very important to note when you do go out to SolarWeb, um, you will obviously have to be registered and have a SolarWeb account in order to be able to log on to SolarWeb. Um, once you are on SolarWeb, um, you'll obviously need to add your P system onto SolarWeb and that's done um, by the unique um, serial number of the inverter. So once you've done that and your system is added on SolarWeb, um, you'll then need to contact Fronius, okay, in order to sign a contract um, so that you can query um, our SolarWeb using an API. Once you've done that, uh, we will then go about creating a key in SolarWeb for you, okay? And what's very important to note about the key is that it's a unique um, access key and it's 36 characters long, okay? And with this key, in order to log on to the access key, um, you will need to generate an access key value, uh, which sort of acts like a password. Again, you should not forget this password because if you do forget this password, you will have to reset it via tech support. Once you've done that, um, you can then um, use our Swagger um, user interface and you can run some tests in our Swagger user interface. I will share the link um, for the Swagger user interface later on in the presentation. 
Uh, but um, just to see that the system works and just to see that you know um, you're able to use it, you can use some test data. So uh, we can query some data such as the meta metadata, which is um, information such as the inverter ID, uh, the installation name, as well as the address of the installation. So the client, again, is able to see the PV system in context of another user. Um, so again, you can um, query multiple installations of your own, and you can export all this, the different information from the multiple installations to a third-party platform. The user provides solar.web credentials, and this, again, allows direct access of users' PV system data. And again, Phonius provides a secure login method, so user credentials do not have to be processed on the client's side. What is the interactive user interface? So it allows for the possibility for initial testing of the API without writing a single line of code. And the user interface also acts as a documentation and provides more details about every API call. The actual user inf interface, which is called Swagger UI, which stands for user interface, is embedded in solar.web, okay? Um, so if you do want to have a look at it, um, the link is indicated here on the screenshot. Um, you can just um, go to that link and have a look at it, but I'll also be sharing the link uh, with you um, during the rest of the presentation. What's very important to note is that with the solar.web query API, it is what we call a build process, okay, if you exceed a certain value. Um, so, for example, if you do between zero to 500,000 data points per month, um, it can be free. If you do more than 500,000 to 2.5 million um, data points per month, um, there will also be a certain charge attached to that. Um, and obviously, um, this will the charge will obviously increase on the amount of data points uh, you do query. Um, if you do want the um, direct um, charging for each um, allocation of data points, uh, you can send one of the technical sales advisors an email and we will get back to you with the um, price um, for each um, platform. Okay, so um, we also have data that is not bold. Um, so data that is not bold would be um, release info and also PV system info, such as the um, system ID and the count of the systems on SolarWeb. So if you query such information, it's not bold. However, if you query um, certain information, it will be bold, okay? Um, certain information such as weather data, uh, that will be bold and it will count as a data point. Um, any power flow data will be bold. So if you do want to query the um, current on phase one, um, that will be bold and it will be count counted as one data point. And any further detailed PV system info will be bold. Okay, so let's just do an example. Let's say I want to um, query some historical data of a PV installation. And let's say I want to find out the amount of energy um, that was exported um, to the grid in the past hour, okay? Just remember on SolarWeb, SolarWeb will get a new set of data every five minutes from the PV inverter, okay? So if I want to get um, an hour's worth of data, if I take one hour and divide it by five minutes, I will get 12 data points, okay? Um, so basically, if I want to get data for an hour on, let's say, the current on phase one, um, I will be generating 12 data points. Okay, so that's very important to note. Okay, the same thing can be said, um, said for um, energy forecasting, uh, as well as weather data, and also for service messages. Um, so if a service message is generated on the inverter, um, you can also query a service message and one service message will count as one data point. Okay, so that again is a very nice feature of our solar.web query API is that if you are a big electrical utility and you have um, hundreds of Fronius installations on a third party um, that you are querying on a third party platform, um, you can also get any service messages uh, that come through from a specific um, installation.
Okay, we'll now move on to the API calls. What API calls are possible? Um, so basically you can call the PV system information, aggregation data, historical data, power flow data, service messages, and meteor data. Uh, basically what meteor data is, is any weather data. Let, let's say the um, weather data for today. With the API calls, um, as indicated earlier, you can um, call your PV system information. Uh, so in this case, I have a screenshot of um, all the Fronius offices that have a Fronius installation. And as you can see with all our different locations, um, if you are an installer, you can basically go to any of your installation and you can query, um, query any data from any one of your installations using our solar.web query API. Okay, you can also have a look at the amount of devices um, given um, on a certain installation. So let's say if you have one installation that maybe has um, maybe four energy meters, um, two on pilots and two inverters, you can query um, all this data as well. Okay, with the aggregation data, um, you can get the energy production and consumption data of a PV system aggregated over. Um, so you can create an aggregated value of the entire lifetime of a PV installation, of a year, of a month, or you can even go to um, a more detailed value such as over a day. With the historical data, um, these are basically your data points that are logged at the inverter every five minutes. So basically the inverter will send um, log data every five minutes to SolarWeb, and that data will then be visible to the end user. Okay, this will be for a PV system, or it will also be for a single device of a given PV system. With the API calls, you can also query power flow data, um, such as the um, production um, that the PV system is producing, the power from and to the grid as well. Um, also, you can also query the household consumption, and you can also query the amount of power that's um, you know, sent or taken from the battery. You can also query the service messages. And these service messages will be state codes and error codes. Um, for example, if maybe if you have an on pilot installed and it gives you an error code of 92, um, you'll be able to query that you know, you've got a 92 error. You can look that up. And you can see that the definition would be that it couldn't reach 60 degrees Celsius within 24 hours, as an example. You can also query any meteor data, but this is only applicable for solar web premium. As my colleague Cyprian indicated at the beginning of the presentation, uh, if you are subscribed to the premium um, of solar web, uh, you do get access to um, weather data predictions, such as a seven day weather forecast. Um, such as what I have indicated on my screen at the moment. That's all from the solar web query API. Um, I think just before we um, you know, go towards the final end of the presentation, I'd just like to show you some example systems, um, which I would believe would be very applicable for our audience. Um, again, this, this webinar is kind of targeted towards our audience in Africa. Um, and as you know, in Africa, there's a lot of PV genset systems um, that are installed in the field, and there's also a lot of AC couple systems. Um, so again, there's a lot of backup systems uh, that incorporate Fronius inverters in Africa. Uh, so I thought it would be very important in order to show the audience today um, how a PV system, uh, a PV genset system, would look on SolarWeb, and how an AC couple system would look on SolarWeb as well. Okay, we will first start off with the, with the PV genset system. So this is the PV genset system um, of the Kirk tobacco farm um, in Zimbabwe. Okay, this is some pictures of the farm at the bottom. Uh, they basically process tobacco, and on this installation, they basically use a Fronius PV inverters um, that is tied up to a, a genset. Okay, so when the grid is there, um, the PV inverters will basically um, cut down the amount of power that's being pulled from the grid. When the grid goes down, the PV genset will then um, sorry, the genset will then um, start up, and now the PV will then reduce the amount of diesel that is being used on the genset. 
uh, follow up, the data that you can see, uh, will only be the um, PV production. Okay, that's the only data that you can see. So, for example, when I took the screenshot, um, the PV inverters were currently producing 22.5 kilowatts, okay? And the utilization was only 50% of the actual PV inverter power. We can also see the energy balance for today, and we can also see the earning for 2020 as well. We can also have a look at the um, production curve, okay? And we can have a look at a daily value, a weekly value, or even a yearly value as well. If you do want to see more data, such as the consumption data, um, that can be viewed, but in order to do that, you'd have to go to the um, PV system controller user interface. Uh, more information on that will be provided on a dedicated PV Genset webinar that we will be um, hosting within the next month. You can also have a look at an example system of an AC coupled installation, and this was a site um, we did um, that was done at One Stop Solar, which is our distributor in Zimbabwe. Um, as you can see in the bottom, they have a little um, movable um, display stand that basically has a Fronius um, inverter on, and it has three Victron inverter chargers on as well. So the Victron inverter chargers are um, responsible for charging the low voltage to Nova batteries, and the Fronius Riptide inverter is uh, responsible for um, you know, converting the DC from the PV panels um, to AC to supply the load directly or to send any excess AC power to the Victron inverter chargers, which are these devices over here, that then convert that AC power to DC in order to charge up the batteries. Okay, the advantage of an AC coupled system is that if the grid goes down, the system will still continue to run irrespective of whether there's grid or whether there's um, no grid. Again, with an AC couple system, the only data that you will be able to see on um, SolarWeb will be the production data. The reason for this um, is the same reason as for the um, PV Genesis system, is that um, you can't incorporate a Fronius smart meter on an AC couple system as well as a PV Genesis system. Okay, that's very important to know. And without a Fronius smart meter, we can't get important parameters such as consumption and such as how much power is going to and from the grid. But with an AC couple system, such as this one, uh, you can get um, further information such as the consumption data um, on the Victron uh, platform. So in this case, we use Victron as the inverter charger, and that data can be obtained on the Victron VRM um, monitoring platform. Okay, I'm now showing you a Fronius storage system. And with a storage system, it is in one of our sites in um, Austria. This is the Fronius International Headquarters. Okay. And on this site, they incorporate a Fronius smart meter. Okay. And this is why you can now see consumption data. And you can also see the amount of energy that's being um, sent to and from the grid and to and from the battery as well. So, as I said earlier on, if you do have a Fronius smart meter installed and the system allows for a Fronius smart meter to be installed, you can get a much clearer picture on um, all the data that is obtained. Okay, for further information, um, you can go to our homepage, fronius.com, okay? And this provides a very clear and compact sur a surface for installers. And it also provides a good, um, also provides the contact details for 24 seven technical supports. And it also allows you to do self support as well. Um, so you can go online and you can um, click around and find maybe a solution to a specific error code as well. You can also get summary of documents and you can also get quick links on our Fronius web page as well. Again, this presentation as well as the recording will be shared with the audience. Okay. And again, the recording will be also uploaded onto our YouTube channel. So you can um, go to the YouTube channel and have a look at all our past webinars and all the past topics we have discussed as well. Okay, if you do want, um, you know, call a specific line um, to answer a very specific question um, or even to email a specific email address. Um, these are all the contact details on the screen. Uh, any technical questions? Um, so if you have a problem with an inverter, please contact tech support. Um, if you do want um, on, the, you know, on the moment reply, um, I would please advise you to call them. Uh, but if you are prepared to wait for a day or two, um, then I would advise you to email them. Okay.
Um, same thing with the training. Um, we have dedicated numbers and a dedicated email address. Also, if you have any sales queries, so if you are interested in buying a Chromex product, um, those are the details. Any after sales service, uh, so maybe if you want to um, you know, maybe get a, a new AC board or something, uh, please contact um, those contact details. Or if you are in one of the responsible regions for um, the technical sales advisors that have pres presented the webinar today, uh, please contact one of us um, and all our details are on the screen. Okay, um, I will be handing over to my colleague, um, Sukhren Nakolo. Um, he will be um, doing the Q&A session along with me, with my other colleague, um, David Mohan. But yeah, that's all from my side. Uh, yeah.